welcome to the series, Explain It in Plain English. This is a series where I explain things and stuff that have to do with photography, videography, and graphic design in plain English. It's not all that mumbo jumbo that sometimes is on articles and in YouTube videos you may watch. While those are great, and I am not talking down on anybody, Sometimes they use language that those of us who do this on a regular basis understand. And so if you're just somebody who wants to just record videos, whether it's how to's or DIY's or just stuff for your business or whatever it is, but you don't do this on the regular, you don't know what all these words mean, this is why I wanted to make this series. This series is for you. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of the series. Okay. So this section, this subsection of the series is things that you need for exposure and specifically aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. So today we're gonna to talk about aperture. Make sure you check out the other two videos that I will explain shutter speed and ISO, but we're gonna start with aperture today. So let's get started. Okay, so first of all, what is aperture? What does it mean? Aperture is the hole in your camera and the sensor behind the lens that allows the light to come through and hits the sensor so that's pretty much what it is without the aperture you wouldn't be able to get light into your camera and so it's necessary so aperture is pretty much the hole that the light comes through in your camera well what does it do well aperture is one of the three things that controls exposure like I mentioned before so you have to use aperture shutter speed and ISO together to work with whatever exposure you want meaning the lightness or the darkness of your photo so you can't only use aperture um hmm take that back let's say you could because technically if you're in manual or another setting you can adjust those three settings separately but it, you won't get the best results so let me just say it that way you'll get the best results if you use all three together and so aperture is the one that lets the light in through the sensor and so that makes sense about how it can make a picture or video light or dark so how do you know if you are controlling or messing up or adjusting the aperture well it shows up on your camera it shows up on your camera as an f stop meaning it says f and then some numbers behind it those numbers signify how open or how closed your camera can be so depending on the level of your camera meaning how expensive it was or the different specifications in your camera depends on what that range of numbers is so like the more expensive cameras have a bigger range and so they can control how many stops in essence so it's, it is like a circle but it's like a circle with square edges and so every time the circle comes Every time this starts out, that was my heater. Every time the circle comes in, it like hits one of those edges. And so each one of those edges is an F stop, AKA one of the points on the aperture range. Hopefully that makes sense. So depending on what specs your camera has depends on what your range is. The range can also be affected by the lenses but that's a whole other thing. I just want to throw that in there. The range can also affect um, the lens. The lens can also affect your range. So I'm just throwing that in there, but we'll address that in another video about lenses down the line. So how do you know which stop is for what? The wider your aperture is, the more light is let in. The smaller, the narrower your aperture is, the less light is let in. Now, why do you need to know that? Because if you're trying to get that blurry background that you see in videos and pictures, and even in this video, I know there is some behind me. There's not too, too much because I didn't want it like too blurry behind me. That is controlled by the aperture, whether it's wide or, or narrow. So a wider aperture is more blurry. A narrow aperture is more sharp more focus not saying you can't get your subject in focus if it's a wide aperture it's just if it's a wide aperture you're gonna have your subject in focus and everything else blurry that includes foreground and background if it's a narrow aperture that means that everything is going to be focused regardless and so depending on what you're doing will depend on what either wide or narrow aperture you want to go with so with that being said, you may think, you may say, Erica, common sense will say the bigger 
the opening, the bigger the number for the F stop, right? Wrong. This is where a lot of people get a little bit mixed up. It's actually switched. The more open it is, the wider it is, the bigger the hole in the aperture is, the smaller the actual number that you see is. First is like an F32, which might be like a pinpoint. So just reverse what you may think, is that a bigger opening does not mean a bigger number. Bigger opening is smaller number. Bigger number means smaller opening. Does that make sense? I know it's a little bit, you have to train your brains to think about it, but bigger, bigger opening, more light, smaller number smaller opening less light bigger number so it's opposite if that helps you think about it you want more light you need a smaller number so hopefully that helps so you're like okay cool so i know what this means i know how to get the blurry background i know how to get everything in focus how do i control it on my camera so this is a setting if you want to control aperture you can't be an auto and so i do say that if you're not quite comfortable with your camera to use auto until you get comfortable with it so this is one of those things where you kind of have to dive in you cannot control aperture specifically by itself in auto you have to be in either manual mode aperture priority mode now what does this look like on cameras it varies now manual probably not manual is almost always an m on the dial on your camera manual is almost always an m however for aperture priority it may show up as an a or an a v on your camera so if you see one of those that's what aperture priority means so aperture priority means you are only messing with the aperture and so it will automatically adjust the shutter speed in the iso because like i said at the beginning those three work together to get the exposure for your pictures or your videos and so if you're like okay i only want to mess with the aperture so that i can control how blurry the background is then your camera you can put an aperture priority mode where you're just messing with the aperture and your camera will automatically set the shutter and the, the shutter speed and the ISO. I suggest doing it that way if you are looking to really learn how to control the aperture, even the shutter speed or the ISO, because you can just take one thing at a time and you can play with that one thing and your camera automatically sets the other settings instead of trying to do all three at once because that might be a little bit overwhelming. So I was sort of starting with aperture priority. If you don't see an A or you don't see AV, I would just search on Google aperture priority for a and then insert the model number camera that you have and then it'll pull it up so that's it make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any of the other videos in this section because remember i'm going to talk about shutter speed and iso so stay tuned for those videos if you have any questions about aperture that i did not address please let me know i did want to keep it very topical for this video i will just address i will address other things about aperture in future videos but if you have any questions please don't hesitate to let me know put it in the comments i'll make sure it ends up in another video so with that being said i'll see y'all next time bye